people are saying to me, hey, Matt, the sales and entrepreneurship, is, is it really cracked up to, to what's supposed to If everybody in America was an entrepreneur, would entrepreneurs, would they be needed? Well, listen. <laughs> Yes, they would, right, handsome? <laughs> I've hired guys to sell me a car. I've hired guys to clean the car, to maintain the car. We've adapted. We've kept people gainfully employed. So this world is getting back to who's willing to get up and get to work. And I hope that's you. What I'd be doing right now in this situation, if I were you, that working hard at the right things pay off. People come to this YouTube channel to think like a millionaire, to start acting like a millionaire, to have their mindset shaped like a millionaire, so therefore they can become a millionaire. And I say not a millionaire on paper, but a cash flow millionaire. But like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. All right, I know what you're thinking. Who the heck is this soccer dad? I'd be saying the same thing too if I was watching this video. But listen, just walking around here in my neighborhood, thinking about this situation that we're in during this pandemic, thinking about this whole stay at home, everybody's quarantined and locked down. It's not fun for a lot of people. I know, no, I, know, I know it's not. And I've just been reflecting the last 21 years of my career as an entrepreneur. I've just been thinking about some of the decisions I make, good, bad, the successes, the failures, the things that I did right, the things I did wrong. And, uh, and I'm thinking about so many people going through the same situation right now. My moment was 1999. My moment to make a lot of bad decisions was 1995, 1996. And it's through those decisions, through those mistakes, I told myself at that point, so listen, I'll never put myself in a position where I financially compromise my future. And when I realized that coming out of the Marine Corps that I had one source of income, I had one person saying, me, saying to me I was good enough to get promoted. I had one person, I had one stream of income saying, you know what, one mistake, one emergency happens, you gotta wait on your next paycheck to make up that mistake. My margin of error was so small. And I was thinking about my future. I was thinking about children. I was thinking about my kids at that time. I've got a, at that time I had a one-year-old, two-year-old. He's now 24 years old. And uh, I had twins. I got a nine-year-old and now we have our baby who's now one years old. And I was thinking about their future. I was thinking about, will daddy be in a position to walk around the neighborhood during the middle of a pandemic, during the middle of a potential recession and still be at peace and still be calm, not freak out, not put his health at risk. And I'm thinking about the decisions about buying a house during when everybody said don't buy a house and about buy a car when people say don't buy a car and we get in and did it. You know why? Because buying these things was like a small portion of our income, a small portion of what we saved and worked hard for. And I'm thinking about the people who file unemployment. At the beginning of these uh, videos, these series of videos, one of the videos I said, one of the episodes said, I think the unemployment filed that week was six million. Two weeks later, it was 10 million. And then this morning I'm reading again, now it's 16 million people have filed for unemployment. So to think that people were relying on a job or a business or corporate America for their financial security, what are they finding now? So my challenge to you is this, my hope for you is this, my encouragement to you is this. Maybe this is a moment right now, if you haven't done so already, that you made a move to pivot. Because there's really three types of people that's happening in America right now. Three types of people are pontificating their next move. Number one is a person says, you know what? I'm cool. 39 weeks of unemployment, I'm cool. I'm good with what I got going. 38, 39 months I can go without having a job. I'm at home, my standards are reducing, they're lowering. I'm waiting on my federal stimulus check, I'm waiting for my tax refund check. And the challenge of that type of thought process is when things somewhat get back to normal, these folks have a harder time to get back into work mode. And the thought process too is this, do you think corporate America is not adjusting? You think more people are rethinking or more companies or more business are rethinking? Do I really need commercial real estate? Do I really need this big of an office because you know why? Because the demand of the workers is to be home. The demand of the workers, this gig economy. And so I'm thinking about the, the employers. I'm an employer now. Before I was an employee, today I'm an employer. I'm thinking what my future employees would want to do. And some of them ask, can I work from home? Can I work from a position of comfort, but still get the work that still be effective and productive remotely or virtually? And the short answer is yes. We've allowed many of them to do that. But I'm thinking about the typical businesses that's out there. That's just not in the insurance industry like we are. They're gonna have a big compromise of uh, having a time of figuring out whether or not their business is solvent in the structure and the way it is. The second type of person right now is going through this type of economy and says, you know what? I went through some pain before. I went through the dot-com bubble. I went through the 08, 09 uh, great recession. Boom, and they've shifted. And they made great opportunities. Now they're sitting on cash. Cash is king. 
cash flow is king. Thank God I'm cash. I'm, I'm elevating about this financial situation. And they're investing in new businesses. And they're waiting for new opportunities to open up. And they're waiting for a property and assets that are that's going to be devalued. And they're coming in when it's low. So when it comes back up again, their basis is low to ride it once again to another high point. They're waiting to go in the market right now. Because not like this money is disappearing. It's just shifting from one hand to the other. Now there's a third type of person. Third type of person right now, they have some form of income. They have a job. They got some cash saved up. Not a lot. But they're saying, you know what? I got some time. But I, in that time, I need to learn some skills. I need to adapt. I need to improvise. I need to improve. I need to adapt and potentially overcome something that I wasn't expecting to begin with. And I hope that's you watching this episode because people are saying to me, hey, Matt, sales and entrepreneurship, is, is it really cracked up to, to what's supposed to If everybody in America was an entrepreneur, would, would they be needed? Well, listen. <laughs> yes, they would, right, handsome? <laughs> I'm thinking myself right now, I, I just, I'm hiring entrepreneurs. I'm hiring businesses. We hired somebody to clean our property in our office. It's two people we hired. We hired people to do work on the house. Not just to sell us the house, but to do work on the house. I've hired guys to sell me a car. I've hired guys to clean the car, to maintain the car. I've hired my trainer. Instead of training me at the gym, now he's training me here at the house. We've adapted. We've kept people gainfully employed. We found out different ways to make sure people have an incentive to not only stay, but also to improve and to grow and to be bonus when they go above and beyond. So this world is getting back to who's willing to get up and get to work. And I hope that's you. One thing is I'm teaching my kids, maybe that's something that I want to consider. What I'd be doing right now in this situation if I were you, that working hard at the right things pay off. Sadly, I know a lot of good friends that are in the wrong industries or the wrong platform or the wrong vehicle and they're getting laid off and they have to shut down their businesses and they have to collapse 5, 10, 15 years of work and pride, the only thing keeping them in the business is pride. One thing hanging them on, but they're basically funding a machine that sadly is dying. So I'm encouraging you to make that move into an industry that's shown itself in this crisis to not only be recession proof, but also pandemic proof. Meaning it's not that we're avoiding this virus altogether. The fact that we can work and create income virtually remotely without having to be chained physically to a spot. Now, do I believe in, in offices where people get together? Of course, because I miss that environment, miss our culture. There's one thing I miss about what we do is just gathering of people because there's nothing that you can replace with a virtual meeting. There's nothing like a, a group of people getting together and the energy flow and the excitement, just the camaraderie and the esprit de corps that's established when people physically get together. Like for example, you get more out of a concert than you do listening to a CD. Same thing to it for us in business. There's one thing watching it virtually and, and listening to it uh, virtually, but there's another thing when we're synergizing together. So with that being said, if you haven't done so already, maybe one of the videos that you need to consider watching is this video right here. How to become a millionaire with less than 500 bucks in less than three years. Why? Because you're watching the Seven Fair Squad YouTube channel and people come to this YouTube channel to think like a millionaire, to start acting like a millionaire, to have their mindset shaped like a millionaire, so therefore they can become a millionaire. And I say not a millionaire on paper, but a cash flow millionaire. Helping people like Danny Singson in the first two days of April, make him $127,000 in the first two days. Kind of like Brian Bartfield, who just started with our industry, making $100,000 in the Bay Area, even though he's got a job in sales working for a fastener company. Kind of like Sosafina Pita, who is on the brink of making her own $100,000 in a year after uh, quitting her government job by going in business for herself. I'm thinking people like Vic and Anna, who came from Hubble Park, over $200,000 of income, and driving a Porsche, and have, uh, have a marriage, and have a kid, operating and running a million dollar agency. I'm thinking about so many people, so many folks that we've helped take control of their income. And that's my bottom line encouragement to you. Because he or she, that controls your income, controls you. It's not how much you know, it's about how you think and how you act and how you grow. Let me know how you're gonna grow. Drop it in the comment section below if you haven't done so yet. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our episode to help fuel you to a seven figure year income to be the next cash flow millionaire, be a first generation millionaire. How's that sound? So please subscribe, look, see, look forward to seeing you at our next episode. And uh, on behalf of uh, Jordan here, my son, till we meet again. Continue live smart, continue live smart and be money smart today. Say bye, Jordan, can you say goodbye? Say bye-bye, can you say bye-bye? Yeah. Oh, I got it now. You got it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, say bye-bye, say bye-bye, say bye-bye, say hi. <laughs>